In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, it is so wonderful to be here with you today. In a special way, it is a very special day for one of our second graders, Julia Tanney, is going to receive her first Holy Communion today at this Mass. It's a reminder for all of us the specialness and the gift that we have in the Holy Eucharist, in Jesus' body and blood. And we thank Julia for reminding of us that of that of us today on this very beautiful day for her. So we'll pray for her at this Mass, along with your intentions. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins. So prepare ourselves to enter into these sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you raise us to new life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you forgive us our sins. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you feed us with your body and blood. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Show favor, O Lord, to your servants, and mercifully increase the gifts of your grace that, made fervent in hope, faith, and charity, they may be ever watchful in keeping your commands. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. This is the word of the Lord that came to me. Go, cry out this message to Jerusalem to hear. I remember the devotion of your youth, how you loved me as a bride, following me in the desert in a land unsown. Sacred to the Lord was Israel, the first fruits of his harvest. Should any presume to partake of them, evil would befall them, says the Lord. When I brought you into the garden land to eat the goodly fruits, you entered and defiled my land. You made my heritage loathsome. The priests asked not, Where is the Lord? Those who dealt with the law knew me not. The shepherds rebelled against me. The prophets prophesied by Baal and went after useless idols. Be amazed at this, O heavens, and shudder with sheer horror, says the Lord. Two evils have my people done. They have forsaken me, the source of living waters. They have dug themselves cisterns, broken cisterns, that hold no water. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. The responsorial psalm. With you is the fountain of life, O Lord. With, With you is the fountain of life, O Lord. O Lord, your mercy reaches to heaven your faithfulness to the clouds. Your justice is like the mountains of God, your judgments like the mighty deep. With, With you, you is the fountain of life, O Lord. How precious is your mercy, O God! The children of men take refuge in the shadow of your wings. They have their fill of the prime gifts of your house. From your delightful stream, you give them to drink. With you is the fountain of life, O Lord. For with you is the fountain of life, and in your light we see light. Keep up your mercy toward your friends, your just defense to the upright of heart. With you is the fountain of life, O Lord. Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. The disciples approached Jesus and said, Why do you speak in the crowds to par why do you speak to the crowds in parables? He said to them in reply, Because knowledge of the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven has been granted to you, but to them it has not been granted. To anyone who has, more will be given, and he will grow rich. 
from anyone who has not, even what he has will be taken away. This is why I speak to them in parables, because they look but do not see, and hear but do not listen or understand. Isaiah's prophecy is fulfilled in them, which says, You shall indeed hear, but not understand. You shall indeed look, but never see. Gross is the heart of this people. They will hardly hear with their ears. They have closed their eyes, lest they see with their eyes, and hear with their ears, and understand with their hearts, and be converted, and I will heal them. But blessed are your eyes, because they see and your ears because you hear. Amen, I say to you, many prophets and righteous people long to see what you see, but did not see it, and to hear what you hear, but did not hear it. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. When I was very young, we weren't allowed to watch too much TV except for what was then Nick at Night, which was old TV reruns. And um, I loved the Bob Newhart show. Not Newhart, this is where, the one where he's a psychiatrist. And it was just, I don't, I don't think I understood anything about it, but I thought it was funny. And the best part was when he would get on the phone and he would hold a one-way conversation, you couldn't hear what the other person was saying. But it would just be the funniest thing. He's a great comic actor. And so as I got older, I started to find his comedy and uh, boy, he's really funny. And there's one in which he's Sir Walter Raleigh, and he and he's calling from uh, the New World, and he's calling back to uh, England. And the people in England, his bosses, are listening to the phone call, and you see that side of the conversation. And Sir Walter Raleigh is trying to explain to them some of the new inventions that he's seen over there, and some of the new products of the New World. And one of them is the coffee bean and that they drink coffee. And he's trying to explain it to them, and the person on the other end is, wait a second, it's a bean and you drink it? And it was, the whole process is just very funny. It's from the 50s and the 60s, so Father Rosman's familiar with it, but the rest of us probably aren't. He has a mask on, so he can't say anything. Oh, it's a kind of... Oh, it's a joyful day today that we're celebrating uh, Julia's First Holy Communion. And we're celebrating something in a similar way to what we laughed about with what Bob Newhart was doing. That He was explaining something from a world no one else could understand. He was trying to explain it. To them it was funny. They didn't get it. They didn't understand the specialness of what he was talking about. Whether it was the tobacco leaf or the coffee bean or whatever it was, they couldn't understand why you would possibly use that. And today we're in a similar situation. And this is why Jesus speaks in parables. He's talking about a world we cannot see and don't understand. And so he tries to relate things to things we do understand. And while that's wonderful, it can still leave us really not understanding. Because Jesus uses things of this world to describe heaven. And that's wonderful. But what it then leads us to believe about heaven is that it's just like earth. But that's not the case. Heaven is completely different realm. It is complete joy, complete love. And earth is not that way. Earth is hard. Here we face troubles and hardships. We have to go to school. We have to take tests. We have to go to work. There's suffering. In heaven there is none of that. In heaven, we see God face to face, and there is complete joy. And yet, describing that to us is difficult, because we don't understand. And we can kind of laugh at it, or think, what's the big deal about heaven? If it's just like earth, but it's not. It is a completely different realm. What it helps us to understand heaven more than anything is the Eucharist, is Jesus' body and blood, that on this altar... What is presented as bread and wine, after the priest says the words that Jesus told us to say, the Holy Spirit changes them completely from what was bread and wine into the body and blood of Christ. That this realm completely changes to heaven. 
and we receive it, whether here physically or at home spiritually. Earth no longer ceases to exist in that bread and wine. It becomes the body and blood of Christ. Brothers and sisters, it's hard for us to understand because we don't live in heaven. We live on earth. But every time we receive the Eucharist or every time we participate in the Mass, we are getting a glimpse of what heaven is. Is it perfectly heaven? No. It's a bit of heaven. It's a foretaste of heaven. But brothers and sisters, we are brought into it at every moment and at every Mass. And boy, how, how, what a wonderful gift it is for Julia today and for all of us that we remember that we're being brought into heaven every time we come to Mass. Recognizing that God is the source of all goodness, let us lift our prayers to him. For the church, may all that we receive from Christ continue to conform us ever closer to his side. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those in positions of authority, may God grant them wisdom to listen well and see the needs of the most vulnerable, especially during this time of our pandemic. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who long to see and hear God, but struggle with doubt, may they be given faith and strength to persevere, because God is indeed with them. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those in our parish who use their gifts as catechists, may the Lord continue to nurture them in faith and love. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the prayers in our hearts and the prayers of those offered on this broadcast today, may they rest in eternal glory in God's presence. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the special intention of John Bernard Eugene, for which this Mass is being offered, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God of mercy, we lift these prayers to you and ask you to hear them through your goodness. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed, Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become for our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. O God, who in the one perfect sacrifice brought to completion varied offerings of the law, accept, we pray, this sacrifice from your faithful servants, and make it holy as you bless the gifts of Abel, so that what each has offered to the honor of your majesty may benefit the salvation of all. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. His death we celebrate in love. His resurrection we confess with living faith, and his coming in glory 
we await with unwavering hope. And so with all the angels and saints, we praise you as with joy we acclaim. Holy, 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 holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, once more, giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat, eat this, this bread, bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Ronald, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the 
the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Lamb of God. You take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold, the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be. Communion Antiphon. Behold, I stand at the door and knock, says the Lord. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door to me, I will enter his house and dine with him, and he with me. Prayer for Spiritual Communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. Graciously be present to your people, we pray, O Lord, and lead those you have imbued with heavenly mysteries to pass from former ways 
to newness of life through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Once again, a congratulations to uh, Julia and all of our second graders and all of those in our parish who are receiving their Holy Communions. Uh, the first Holy Communions uh, was last Sunday, and it will be a couple weeks from now. Um, and then some others scattered throughout there. So what a wonderful joy, and again, a reminder to us of the special gift of the Eucharist for all of us, so that we never take it for granted. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks, Thanks be to God. St. Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen.